Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, so, uh, the clinical situations uh, in which you might, we might discuss uh, RV failure problems, especially uh, after heart surgery, and I will focus my talk mainly on two uh, uh, problems, and uh, the problems of RV failure following uh, LVAD uh, implantation, and for uh, other also uh, 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 physicians who are doing heart transplantation, this is also big problems uh, with uh, uh, problems with uh, patients who uh, have RV failure following uh, transplantation. There are other situations uh, following heart surgery where uh, RV failure can occur uh, after severe or chronic uh, mitral valve disease uh, repair, uh, after pr uh, pulmonary thromboendectorectomy, and some cases of uh, failure to win from CBP because of severe RV failure it might be the case uh, in case of uh, perioperative uh, RV uh, myocardial infarction, for example. So after a heart transplantation, uh, RV failure results from coupling of donor heart uh, not adapted uh, to uh, the elevated pulmonary artery pressure and resistance to the increased afterload of pulmonary artery and hypertension, increased uh, pulmonary uh, resistance uh, in the recipient. Uh, and the adaptation by the donor heart might be impaired uh, also by ischemia and perfusion injuries uh, associated with the organ preservation. So it might result, it will result uh, in dilatation, ischemia and decreased contractility, and also decreased pulmonary blood flow and leftward uh, shift of the septum, uh, which subsequently uh, leads to lower LV filling uh, and reduced uh, systemic cardiac output. Following RVAD uh, implantation, RV uh, failure is going to result from increased uh, RV filling uh, and RV preload uh, because of the new uh, machine which helps uh, the LV and which it will increase uh, venous return. Uh, it's going to be also a decrease in LV filling and also leftward shift uh, of the septum. Uh, and also it's going to be also an increased afterload due to pulmonary hypertension and increased uh, pulmonary resistance. Um, and it's going to result exactly uh, in the same problems, dilatation, ischemia, decreased contractility, uh, and decreased uh, blood flow, uh, which is going to create a visual, vicious uh, cycle. So uh, first, the definition uh, of RV failure uh, after LVAD implantation. Uh, this is a, a, a definition which uh, has been recently published in, uh, in uh, uh, the uh, Journal of Heart and Lung Transplant. Uh, it's from a, a study of inhaled uh, nitric oxide uh, after LVAD, and actually it was a, a consensus definition uh, for that study uh, to define uh, RV failure following LVAD implantation. So uh, RV failure was defined as any of the following, either deaths or inability to win from uh, cardiopulmonary bell pass or any two of the following uh, sustained for 15 minutes uh, following a complete uh, withdrawal of CBP. Uh, LV, uh, the um, flow of the uh, machine, the LVAD below uh, two liters per minute per uh, square meter. Uh, administration of high dose of inotropes, uh, mean arterial pressure below, below 55, CVP over 16, or SVO2 uh, below uh, 55. Is it predictable? And this is the big issue. Um, some data now in the literature, uh, it's almost, uh, it's all the time on res retrospective series uh, of patients, uh, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. Uh, the first, one of the first one is uh, based uh, only on uh, uh, clinical and uh, uh, biological uh, data. Uh, was published in, in Jack uh, four years ago uh, as the RV failure risk score uh, for those patients were going to have RV failure following LVAD uh, implantation. And using a multivariable model, uh, four uh, variables were highly associated uh, with RV failure, was uh, vasopressor requirements with four points, um, transaminase over 82 points, bilirubin uh, over two, uh, 2.5 points, and creatinine uh, over 2.3 uh, milligram per deciliter, also uh, three points. And using this classification, uh, they were able uh, to break down the population of patients uh, with uh, a prognosis as a function of a, a development of RV failure, as you can see on the uh, uh, left uh, uh, part of this slide. 
Um, there are many other uh, uh, risk scores uh, which have been derived uh, from uh, risk pr prospective studies. This is uh, also a, a paper published uh, in the past uh, four years. Uh, it's a huge series of patients, uh, over 250 uh, ELVAD recipients. Uh, of them, 37% uh, uh, needed uh, a, a BIVAD. And they evaluated uh, the factors uh, which were associated uh, with uh, uh, also a placement of uh, uh, RVAT. And uh, these uh, here uh, on uh, uh, the left uh, side, you have the type of LVAT device which were used. Uh, actually, it's a study, uh, might be also a problem with that study, with uh, only uh, old patient machine uh, which were used at that time and the uh, uh, machines which were used as a uh, uh, RVAD assist device were uh, uh, mainly uh, biomedicus or uh, thoracic PVAD. So among the variables associated with uh, uh, RV, RV failure were cardiac index, low cardiac index, high uh, uh, RV, uh, low RV stroke work, uh, and also uh, severe pre-VAD dysfunction as well as uh, uh, creatinine once again. Uh, and systolic uh, blood pressure below uh, 96. Among the uh, uh, data from ECO, uh, there are very simple uh, uh, signs uh, which are highly predictive of RV failure uh, following uh, the LVAD implantation. This is a, uh, also a recent study uh, showing that uh, tricuspid regurgitation and geometry of the right ventricle before uh, LVAD implantation were highly associated uh, with uh, RV failure. Uh, and uh, is uh, 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 reported here on that slide uh, the, uh, when the uh, uh, RV was dilated, uh, looking at the uh, uh, dimension of the, uh, uh, on the axis of the RV, or when the uh, a patient had severe uh, tricuspid regurgitation, these two factors were highly associated uh, with uh, uh, RV failure following that implantation. Uh, the uh, tricuspid and on the motion, the TAPS, uh, was also a, a very uh, uh, a good indicator of a poor uh, uh, outcome of following a VAD implantation. Uh, in that study, uh, uh, of 33 uh, patients who got uh, a VAD, uh, they uh, showed that when the tricuspidal and motion was below 7.5 millimeter, uh, it was provided a high sense specificity uh, for predicting uh, post LVAD uh, RV failure. And there was uh, a huge difference uh, between the two groups. Uh, those who had RV failure had a uh, mean uh, a tricuspidal motion of 8 millimeter uh, as compared to 15 in the group of patients uh, who did well uh, without uh, uh, RV uh, failure. Uh, these are echo data uh, on the right side. Uh, you might also use uh, uh, echo parameters from the left side to predict uh, RV failure. This is a very recent study uh, uh, here, which was uh, 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 published uh, this, uh, this, uh, this month. Uh, and the uh, echocardiographic data uh, here based on the LV and diastolic dimension, the LV ejection fraction, and uh, the ratio of the uh, left atrium dimension on the uh, LV and diastolic uh, diameter uh, uh, also predicted uh, very nicely uh, the uh, outcome of the, uh, of the patient and the occurrence of RV failure. Uh, it was more frequent when the uh, left ventricle was not dilated uh, when the ejection fraction was above 33 and when the uh, left atrium was dilated. Uh, so these are uh, retrospective study. They are indicative of uh, 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 the outcome. Now, uh, as you know, we have moved uh, from uh, uh, pulsatile and big machines uh, to more uh, to smaller machines, and uh, most of them are continuous flow pumps uh, devices. Uh, so uh, this study compared uh, the uh, occurrence uh, of RV failure uh, between these two types uh, of system. There was no 
big differences between uh, the two groups of patients surveyed, the, the one who got first a pulsatile a pump in the uh, late 90s and uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, the year 2000, and the, those who got a heart med too uh, 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 on the second part of the study. Uh, and what they found, the author found in that study, is, is that uh, the incidence of RV uh, dysfunction was almost similar, but fewer ARTMED2 patients required uh, RV assist device placement and fewer required pure inotropic support. So this kind of differences. And uh, it's probably because uh, for uh, the patients who got the ARTMED2, uh, it was possible uh, to increase slowly uh, the flow uh, of the machine uh, within a few minutes following initiation and uh, probably was not as easy uh, with the, the, the bigger machine was, uh, which was discussed in, in that paper. Uh, another paper, more recent paper, focusing only uh, on patients who received the latest generation machine, the HeartMed2. Uh, it's the big series of uh, patients, uh, over uh, uh, 480 patients uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the trial. Uh, only 6% uh, of this population of patients received uh, 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 RV assist device. And some of them also were cried inotropes. And when looking at the predictors, uh, we all always uh, in the same story, renal failure, uh, as uh, here uh, shown by the uh, over 39, or high CVP, uh, or the need for uh, 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 ventilation following implantation also were highly associated uh, with the occurrence of uh, RV uh, uh, failure. The prognosis uh, of RV failure following LVAD implantation, uh, once again, a uh, 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 graph from uh, the study uh, from uh, Bob Cormos and collaborators uh, showing that uh, it impacts on the, uh, on the survival of these patients. Those who do not have RV failure following LVAD implantation and better uh, survival at one month, at one year, uh, excuse me, uh, between 78% uh, to uh, uh, below uh, 60 in those patients who had uh, RV failure. So uh, now the treatment uh, and uh, uh, the uh, decision on uh, uh, which kind of treatment these patients should uh, uh, get first line objectives is to preserve uh, coronary perfusion uh, through maintenance of systemic blood pressure. Uh, it is also important to optimize RV preload to increase RV contractility, to reduce the RV afterload by decreasing uh, the resistance, and to limit uh, pulmonary vasoconstriction uh, through ventilation with high FiO2. Uh, so, uh, to achieve these goals, uh, we are going to have a whole bunch of uh, possibilities, including uh, catecholamines, uh, drugs which will impact on the pulmonary circulation, uh, optimization of volumia, and of course, uh, the use of assist device. I will not go through uh, this uh, uh, slide. It's a very nice paper uh, published two years ago in uh, Jack. Uh, summarizing the medical and surgical treatment for acute uh, RV failure and also very good uh, here uh, diagram showing uh, the different uh, issues and different solutions uh, to manage uh, these patients. The drug therapies, uh, inotropes, uh, isoproterenol is a, a non-selective beta agonist uh, which is a positive in inotropic and chronotropic agent, which also produces uh, pulmonary and peripheral vasodilatation. This drug is very important following heart transplantation, and most of those patients uh, who have RV failure following heart transplantation will have a, a strong benefit uh, from uh, these drugs. Other drugs which might be used, uh, inotrope, dobutamine, epinephrine, milvanone, uh, and now a few reports in the literature of the use of uh, uh, levosimendan, uh, which is a, a calcium sensitizer. I will not go through the uh, vasodilators because it's the, uh, uh, the focus of the next uh, uh, talk. Uh, just uh, two slides, three slides about uh, this uh, uh, medication. Uh, here is the use of sildenafil uh, for patients with a persistent uh, pulmonary hypertension following uh, insertion of an LVAD and was shown in that uh, study that uh, the patients who got sildenafil at lower uh, pulmonary uh, uh, vascular resistance 
uh, and higher contractility uh, than patients we did not, uh, and this was uh, uh, the case uh, as soon as uh, two weeks uh, following uh, VAD uh, implantation. Uh, another study uh, which was published a few uh, months ago uh, showing that uh, inhaled uh, nitric oxide does not uh, provide any benefit uh, in this population patient. This paper might also probably be discussed in the next uh, presentation. Uh, Levosimanda, and there was a re very recent paper published in the Azaya Journal uh, a, a few weeks ago uh, uh, showing that uh, uh, a pretreatment with Levosimanda in this patient might be also a way uh, to select patients who will need uh, uh, an RVAD following uh, LVAD implantation. Those patients uh, who, for whom uh, anti pro BNP uh, would not go uh, decrease uh, uh, less, uh, will decrease less than 25% will probably need uh, uh, RVAD in that situation. Next question, uh, which kind of device and when? Uh, there are extra corporal device and the uh, uh, easiest way is uh, uh, to use ECMO. Uh, but there are also many other uh, devices in the market. Uh, big devices, uh, the Abiumed, the Berlin Heart, or the Teratic PVAD, uh, or other devices uh, which might be uh, available uh, uh, in the future. Uh, the Impella system might be adapted uh, to the uh, right ventricle in a, no, it's a system called the DEX-8. Uh, the decision uh, regarding RVAD implantation should be made uh, as soon as possible and probably before leaving the OR. Uh, it's going to be dependent on uh, many uh, factors. Those we discussed uh, from the uh, risk predic prediction scores, but also uh, in the minutes uh, following uh, implantation of the uh, left VAD in the OR uh, using uh, uh, transvascular echo uh, to detect uh, the size and the dysfunction uh, of uh, the right ventricle uh, following uh, initiation of the LVAD. And it's probably wise uh, to implant an RVAD in case of depth uh, regarding RV function. Uh, this uh, study focused on the impact of uh, uh, ECMO uh, in the setting of uh, RV failure after heart transplantation, and it compared uh, the outcome of patients who received ECMO uh, to those who received uh, a VAD, a uh, bigger VAD, uh, I think was a, 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 a thoracic PVAD in that uh, uh, series, and those authors uh, showed that uh, patients who received ECMO did better uh, than patients uh, who received uh, a big VAD, uh, and uh, survival and graft survival was better uh, here uh, uh, for those patients who got uh, uh, ECMO as compared to those who got the, uh, an RVAD. Uh, very recent papers uh, of uh, uh, another strategy uh, of systematic uh, implantation of ECMO uh, in the setting of uh, an RVAD uh, uh, implantation, especially if there are doubts about the uh, uh, RV function. This uh, uh, here uh, a paper of uh, uh, describing uh, the outcome of uh, 10 patients uh, who received a peripheral uh, ECMO, and uh, uh, for this uh, uh, group, uh, ECMO provided a, a satisfactory uh, preemptive uh, right heart support, and some patient uh, got uh, ECMO for uh, a few days uh, following uh, implantation, uh, and ECMO uh, was removed uh, uh, in the following days. This is also a paper from uh, our group, uh, and now uh, for most of the patients who got uh, an LVAD, uh, especially those who do not have ECMO before implantation, uh, the uh, implantation of the uh, LVAD uh, is followed by implantation of peripheral ECMO, uh, at the end of the procedure, and it permits uh, a soft weaning uh, of ECMO uh, in the days following uh, the uh, implantation. Um, this uh, also uh, is a, a report uh, uh, of uh, another technique uh, using ECMO, uh, but this is a little bit different because uh, in that setting there is a Dacron graft uh, which is attached to the main pulmonary artery and passed through, through uh, the cephoid exit where the outflow cannula 
uh, of the ECMO system is inserted. The inflow uh, cannula is procontinuously cannulated using the silicon technique in the femoral vein. And the chest is definitely uh, closed. Uh, the technique allows bedside removal, avoiding chest reopening. And we have been using this technique uh, in, uh, in a few patients, especially uh, those who got a uh, hardware uh, device uh, uh, in the past two months. Because uh, using that technique, uh, you don't have reinjection in the aorta using VA. Uh, it's a, a bypass of the, left, of the right ventricle uh, from uh, the femoral vein to the pulmonary artery. So it might be better in some, in some cases. And uh, here you see the decrease in the uh, uh, flow uh, of uh, the uh, right uh, pump uh, in the patient when the patient improves. And once again, it permits a slow decrease in the assistance of the right ventricle, and it permits uh, case of some kind of rehabilitation of the uh, right ventricle. Uh, this is another uh, clever uh, possibility, a uh, novel approach to a percutaneous RV support uh, using a flexible uh, outflow cannula placed in the right internal jugular vein to the pulmonary artery uh, to vent the pulmonary artery and uh, to, to uh, re-inject, excuse me, the pulmonary, in the pulmonary artery. And there is an inflow cannula which is placed from the femoral vein uh, to the right atrium. Uh, so this is a, 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 a RV mechanical support uh, uh, without uh, opening the chest. So it might also be uh, interesting in some cases, uh, especially uh, here uh, in a patient with bivat failure uh, who got uh, many, many cannulas. Uh, uh, indeed, here is the, there is an impella uh, 5.0 in the left ventricle, and you see here the cannula uh, which is in, inserted in the pulmonary artery and here the cannula uh, in the uh, femoral vein in the uh, IVC. To uh, finish up uh, this uh, uh, presentation, uh, ECMO is also uh, useful after pulmonary trauma atherectomy. This is a, a report from the uh, group from Papworth showing that uh, uh, it uh, helps to rescue patients uh, after this complicated procedure. And uh, uh, for the long term, uh, there has been a, also a report of the use of two VATs, uh, two LVATs with the hardware uh, system, uh, one for a left ventricle assistant and also uh, one on the uh, uh, right side. Uh, here was uh, a bending of the outflow of the machine uh, uh, to uh, uh, get uh, a, a very... Uh, a tiny uh, bivad instead of uh, big machines like the uh, thoracic uh, uh, bivad, for example, or even the uh, uh, total uh, artificial heart. So in conclusion, Harvey failure is a dreadful uh, complication of heart surgery, and especially in the case of uh, heart transplantation and LVAD implantation. The factors uh, predicting Harvey failure have sensitivity and specificity which are not optimal. Uh, so you're going to need a uh, uh, very careful assessment of the RV uh, just at the time of implantation in the OR. Uh, it's going to be in, very important to optimize the medical treatment before and during surgery using all kinds of medication, improving uh, contractility and decreasing uh, the uh, uh, pulmonary artery pressure. And uh, ECMO in that context uh, allows a soft winning and adaptation of the RV to the high pulmonary pressure and increased preload. So it's a versatile and, very, and not expensive strategy, which probably is going to be used more and more in, in that setting. And this is uh, my institution in La Pitié. Thank you very much. And um, uh, my talk is uh, going to be slightly different because it's going to be uh, more physiological and uh, talking about more chronic situation uh, and the role of, uh, uh, of the right ventricle. Um, there is, uh, uh, I'm sorry that I'm starting with this basic slide. Uh, just to remind you that uh, in patients with pulmonary hypertension, the symptoms are uh, uh, parallel with pulmonary, pulmonary vascular resistance uh, in the uh, circulation. And this is a further uh, par um, uh, further uh, um, uh, with uh, the increase of pulmonary artery pressure. Uh, 
This is up to the specific point. The increase is up to the specific point. Oh, sorry, it doesn't. How, uh, which, uh, where the cardiac output is able to maintain the um, um, enough volume of the blood to, during the exercise. And this is the uh, very important point which, is, um, such, uh, which starts the decompensation of right heart and uh, deterioration of the patient. Um, and practically, the survival of the patient uh, is dependent on the right ventricle dysfunction and run right ventricle failure. And these are the slides uh, of two patients, one uh, uh, who has been long-term survival um, on the pulmonary uh, arterial uh, treatment when you have, when you can see the, um, the very hypertrophied, unfortunately that doesn't work, hypertrophied, uh, um, uh, right ventricle and only slightly dilated. It's, it's oh, that, that's okay. Hi, thank you. Hypertrophied right ventricle and uh, dilated uh, a little bit in the patient who has been a long term survival. In the contrast to the one which is uh, very dilated and uh, uh, not hypertrophied and the patient died of right heart failure. There is now some data suggesting that that uh, type of the uh, reaction and response might be uh, genetically, um, um, uh, with the genetic background. Uh, there is no doubt that the cardiac index is a um, important, and cardiac function is important to maintain a survival in patient with pulmonary artery hypertension and other types of pulmonary hypertension. And this is the survival curve for the patient who are a non-surgical patient with a chronic thrombombolic pulmonary hypertension. And this is the UK cohort and the patient who had a cardiac output more than two survived much better. Up to 2007, practically, there was no um, data and no studies exploring models of the chronic heart failure. There was practically models, sorry, um, okay, models of the acute heart failure, and we were not exactly, we didn't know what makes the chronically stressed right ventricle to f fail. And it was like walking into the, uh, uh, to the incurable condition. We knew that the right ventricle uh, failure, our knowledge about right ventricle failure has lagged behind the um, uh, left ventricle. Uh, this uh, ventricle, which is less muscular, which is uh, um, only uh, restricted its role to the pumping blood through the single organ, um, and, and has not got the sort of uh, attention of the uh, um, uh, epidemic uh, um, diseases like cardiomyopathy or myocardial infarct has been practically left behind. And uh, um, consequently, there is a little attention being dedicated uh, to the right ventricle dysfunction. And we still have got a very little information about specific uh, molecular and cellular mechanisms which are contributing to the uh, maintenance of the uh, failure or right ventricle function, how uh, ventricle dysfunction uh, evolves, and what sort of intervention uh, uh, to proceed to maintain the function. Um, it, uh, uh, in pulmonary hypertension, where is a high pulmonary vascular resistance, we even have got a very little information about the ischemia of right ventricle. And uh, we are not sure if it's in the me mechanism of microvascular endothelial cell dysfunction or if this is the, uh, uh, whether the myocytes uh, undergo apoptosis. And uh, we only know that the, uh, uh, the shape of the right ventricle is uh, uh, altered and the right ventricle stress and the right ventricle free wall thickness appear to have uh, um, inversely related. Finally, we also do not know uh, in what mechanism the end-stage right ventricle repairs in response to lung transplantation or pulmonary endotherectomy. 
This is the, uh, the, the pioneers uh, uh, in the um, research into the right ventricle and pulmonary vascular resistance are the um, uh, colleagues from uh, um, Norbert Volker Institute. And this is uh, the one of the uh, uh, graphs showing that uh, there is an inverse uh, uh, correlation between the right ventricle uh, wall stress and the uh, right ventricle uh, ejection fraction. Um, they also, they have noticed that the patient with a congestive heart failure who have uh, um, no elevated pulmonary artery pressure and no uh, re pu uh, elevated uh, pulmonary vascular resistance uh, survives quite well and those who have got uh, elevated pulmonary artery pressure and uh, a degree of pulmonary uh, right ventricle failure, uh, their survival is dramatically uh, reduced. In my opinion, there is only one good model of the uh, human uh, remodeling of uh, right ventricle, and this is uh, pulmonary endoterectomy, as a, a transplantation is not as good because we are using uh, a degree of immunosuppression. But after a successful pulmonary endoterectomy, uh, we can see within the matter of days remodeling of uh, the after removal of a resistance so we can see the immediate uh, um, improvement in right ventricle function and uh, um, unfortunately that movie doesn't work on that system uh, um, and that sort of re uh, um, remodeling is a matter of the even three days. Unfortunately, that model doesn't exist in uh, other types of pulmonary hypertension and uh, with the idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension where the resistance is very high like in this cohort of French uh, published recently by Marc Humber from Paris group where the pulmonary vascular resistance is around 13 wood units we, despite all the uh, treatment with a re uh, targeted pulmonary arterial target therapy, we do not re uh, um, achieve any significant reduction of, uh, of the pulmonary vascular resistance. And as a result, our uh, survival in patients with uh, this cohort is uh, um, not uh, still very poor with one, two, or three years survival, 83, 67, and 58 percent, respectively, across the whole cohort. Obviously, the patients who have got, uh, who are in functional status of New York class two, will survive better than functional class three. But still, despite all our uh, manipulation with a very uh, complex and expensive drug, the survival is very poor. So, uh, going back to the uh, heart failure, there are four uh, paradigms of the um, heart failure, which, which is of a cardiorenal uh, uh, model with digoxin and diuretics, a cardiocirculatory uh, model with pulmonary vasodilators, and this is which we normally uh, and use in the pulmonary arterial hypertension, neurohormonal with ACE and beta blockers, and genetic and molecular models, which is just on the horizon. And uh, um, in pulmonary hypertension, uh, right ventricle um, is usually uh, either a pressure uh, overloaded, volume overloaded, due to the myocardial disease, tricuspid stenosis, or complex congenital diseases. And, um, and uh, we normally uh, apply the strategies which are uh, already been mentioned by my uh, um, previous speaker, uh, talking about optimization of the preload, afterload, contractility, and uh, maintenance of the uh, uh, normal sinus rhythm. Um, and there is a, a, a guidance uh, suggesting to avoid hypotension, uh, to, uh, to avoid uh, vicious circle uh, and myocardial infarct. 
However, this is not giving us significant improvement. And we also notice that there is the right ventricle is um, re-adapting to the situation in a completely different way to the left ventricle. Uh, and that is probably because of different embryology, anatomy, and physiology of the right ventricle. And uh, now we uh, believe that uh, that, uh, that adaptive uh, right ventricle hypertrophy might be uh, required uh, uh, in the same sort of way as a fetal reaction or, and the matching of uh, the angiogenesis. Also, uh, the, all, all the aspects of adrenergic receptor blockade in right ventricle needs to be further explored. Um, Again, we tend to transfer all the, our information from the left to the right ventricle, but however, they are completely different. Right ventricle is a, is a, is a thin wall uh, because it's pumping against a very low pressure. However, if the pressure is increased, there is a dramatic um, drop in the stroke volume, uh, much uh, more significant compared to the left ventricle. Uh, in the um, situation when there's high uh, pulmonary vascular resistance and uh, high pulmonary artery pressure, like in the idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, the uh, ventricle uh, is a changing, uh, not only is hypertrophied, but is changing uh, geometry and is completely uh, um, uh, um, uh, occluding the um, uh, left ventricle. The um, current uh, uh, status of art believes that uh, in the pulmonary arterial hypertension, whereas the uh, pressure overload, uh, there is a, in, uh, quite a significant increase in the wall stress. There are increase in the neurohormonal and, in, and immunological activation uh, in the, uh, through the, uh, the, through the in, uh, um, inflammation which triggered uh, matrix and apoptosis and hypertrophy, and um, very often uh, maladaptation and remodeling leading to the dilatation and heart failure. Also, this sort of um, uh, myocardial remodeling can cause the different type of arrhythmias and sudden deaths. Finally, um, there is no doubt that there is some uh, genetic determinants which are um, um, affecting this remodeling. And uh, uh, finally, uh, there is the uh, altered uh, bioenergetic sources uh, 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 further uh, contributing to the right myocardial ischemia. Uh, there is uh, uh, several different diseases which are contributing to this um, uh, mechanism of uh, the remodeling. And uh, uh, obviously, the one with the very high resistance is of pulmonary arterial hypertension, where we uh, um, apply uh, the uh, um, treatments such as uh, prostanoids, endothelial receptor antagonists, phosphodiesterase, 5 inhibitors, and obviously anticoagulation. Currently, there are several other uh, um, drugs which are on the way, uh, such as uh, the um, uh, Rio Siguet, which is a cyclase stimulator, uh, the thyroidine kinase uh, inhibitor, such as Gleevec, and uh, many more which are trying to um, affect and reduce pulmonary vascular resistance. However, this is still uh, rather slowing the progress of disease than reversing uh, the disease, at least in hum human uh, um, in human. There are um, pulmonary uh, right heart failure in the context of the um, cardiopulmonary diseases, where the ob obviously oxygen and CPAP is the way uh, treatment of choice, thromboembolic disease with anticoagulation and pulmonary endarterectomy. Um, the right heart failure uh, in the context of systemic uh, right ventricle were obviously uh, ACE inhibitors and beta blockade and resynchronization as a way of uh, uh, um, uh, choice. And finally, the surgical um, conditions. There is still very, um, uh, very little, or very it's still poor understanding of uh, right heart management. 
and practically uh, the only diuretics and digoxin uh, are uh, commonly used and uh, the current guidelines are, um, suggest to avoid uh, negative uh, inotropes, particularly beta blockers, which are feared to um, precipitate and ex uh, exacerbate right heart failure. Um, as I have already mentioned, um, and that one of our tasks is to optimize afterload, and currently we, use, we uh, use the three main pathways, which is uh, the uh, endothelial receptor antagonists, um, nitric oxide with sildenafil, um, uh, with the uh, phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, and the prostacyclines, which we can deliver through the IV, uh, AV route, subcutaneous and nebulized route. However, none of those uh, individually or in combination are not able to reverse pulmonary vascular resistance. So um, uh, we strive to improve the quality of uh, uh, our patient and uh, um, Despite uh, all the uh, advances, mortality, uh, as I have shown, is uh, still quite uh, significant. And that has encouraged us uh, to question the dogma which is currently existing. And uh, the one of the most important issue was that the chronic elevation of pulmonary artery pressure and chronic uh, elevation of pulmonary vascular resistance is insufficient to uh, uh, explain right heart failure. And uh, uh, this has uh, uh, been um, looked into in uh, the current uh, set of investigations. Um, we, uh, there, were, uh, there was quite a, a lot of physiological um, um, studies looking into the pulmonary artery compliance, which is contributing to that sort of uh, uh, failure of uh, uh, improvement. And there is uh, definitely um, further information uh, uh, from the uh, resistance and compliance, uh, which are contributing to understanding of right heart uh, behavior. Uh, also, the, the pressure volume loops, whether the understanding of pulsatile um, um, uh, um, nature of the uh, pulmonary circulation is adding this information about the, uh, the uh, failure or, um, of the right ventricle. And this uh, is uh, possible with a conductance methodology, and I hope that in the near future we'll be able to show you uh, the, uh, uh, um, the pressure volume loops on some of our patients. There's definitely need for the further investigation of the oxygen supply uh, to the right ventricle in that sort of chronic situation. Uh, and that is uh, currently uh, sl uh, slowly uh, surfacing from the pipelines. Sorry. Um, and finally, the uh, most important uh, currently and discuss the association, uh, uh, this is uh, association of uh, sympathetic activation, which we know that is uh, worse, uh, um, gives a worse outcome in the pulmonary artery uh, hypertension. We know that, that uh, uh, the sympathetic activation is also very important in left ventricle, and the beta block, uh, blockade is very successful. Therefore, that has uh, been uh, discussed and taken into the, um, 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 the um, under the review. The whole uh, concept comes from the one un unblinded and uncontrolled study, uh, which show that uh, the deleterious effects of beta blockers on exercise capacity uh, and hemodynamics in patients with portopulmonary uh, hypertension. Uh, those patients uh, were able to walk much further when the uh, beta blockers have been stopped. And since this paper, uh, there is a strong belief that uh, the um, beta blockers are um, uh, very, um, uh, are contraindictory for the pulmonary hypertension patients. However, uh, again, Norbert Volker has set up the new first practically um, 
uh, um, animal model of the uh, chronic right ventricle failure, um, and uh, they have challenged this dogma um, and treated the patient with uh, the beta blockers, with the carvedilol, and they felt that uh, if the, there is an isolated right ventricle pressure overload, um, there is a no, uh, uh, there is a hypertrophy, but there is no failure. However, if that uh, uh, model is associated with the angioproliferative pulmonary hypertension, such as with the remodeled uh, uh, vasculature, like in the, the pulmonary arterial hypertension, the right ventricle uh, uh, um, adaptation is completely different, is associated with apoptosis, fibrosis, and a decrease of right ventricle capillary dens density. Uh, there is a decreased uh, the um, vascular endothelial growth factors, uh, uh, mRNA, and the protein expression uh, um, is reduced uh, and stabilization of uh, hypoxia. So uh, we believe that uh, the, those two uh, aspects uh, are very related and they've got a completely different, uh, should have a completely different approach. What was interesting in that paper that when those uh, animals were challenged with the carvedilol, uh, um, those uh, metabolic changes and, uh, uh, have improved. The animal's uh, cardiac output has increased despite lack of increase in heart rate, and uh, they, uh, try, uh, the uh, TAPSI was improved and, exis and uh, exercise endurance as well. There are some other um, uh, modifications uh, and metabolic uh, um, uh, manipulations on the right ventricle of currently uh, performing, which are showing uh, the um, a regression of right ventricle hypertrophy. However, this is still uh, within the uh, animal model. So I think that uh, um, uh, we know now that the only pulmonary artery, uh, uh, high pre pulmonary artery pressure and high PVR are not explaining right ventricle failure. And uh, that uh, has to be um, uh, uh, associated with some other changes in the right ventricle. So we think that we have now some bridge to this sort of uh, uh, incurable condition. And we think that uh, we now have got uh, uh, some future plans how to investigate it. Um, we know and we have got a quite a number of uh, um, uh, um, molecules to reduce the afterload, but also to investigate molecular mechanisms of, uh, of the adrenergic activation, neurohormonal -horm stimulation of right ventricle, and to apply this to the different animal models, specifically with the genetic um, uh, BMPR2 mice, which is typical for uh, idiopathic pulmonary artery uh, hypertension. So um, we strongly believe that for the pulmonary hypertension trials, we should consider uh, right ventricle as a, an uh, endpoint, or that we should improve on imaging, not on your structure, but also on uh, function. Um, and uh, we should um, work more on the importance of adaptive versus maladaptive uh, right ventricle hypertrophy um, on ischemia and metabolic changes and what has been already discussed more into the devices. So I think that we are as improved our understanding. However, we still are in limbo uh, with uh, uh, management of uh, the right uh, ventricle failure and uh, pulmonary vascular resistance. However, I think that we have improved uh, survival of our patient. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to acknowledge um, multidisciplinary team at Papworth, which has been contributing to some of those thoughts. Thank you.